We do believe when the SEC uh, approves a spot Bitcoin ETF in the US, and we think it's close, and we hope to be among those approved, uh, that that will be key. That will be a seal of approval for institutions to diversify into a new asset class. Kathy Wood provides a timely update on the pending approvals for Bitcoin ETF, suggesting that approval could potentially come as early as January 8th. Wood expresses a bullish outlook on Bitcoin, predicting a substantial surge in its value as an asset class. She anticipates that Bitcoin's market cap, currently at $700 billion, will skyrocket to $20 trillion, signifying a remarkable 30-fold increase. If this prediction materializes, Bitcoin's price would surpass a million dollars. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is actively reviewing several applications for the ETF and the significant influence of BlackRock is contributing to a growing belief that we might soon witness the approval of at least one Bitcoin spot ETF. This prospective approval is seen as a historic milestone eagerly awaited by the Bitcoin community for well over a decade. Kathy Wood, the CEO of ARK Invest, underscores the decentralized and transparent nature of the Bitcoin network in her update. This characteristic is highlighted as a key factor, making manipulation of the cryptocurrency highly challenging. Wood's insights contribute to the broader narrative of optimism surrounding the potential approval of a Bitcoin ETF and the transformative impact it could have on the cryptocurrency landscape. We think in the, in the crypto space, for example, there are three revolutions taking place, a money revolution, a financial services revolution, and uh, a digital asset property rights revolution. And they're all big. Uh, the biggest one, though, is the money revolution. That's Bitcoin, uh, because it's the first global, digital, decentralized, uh, private, no government oversight, rules-based, critical, monetary system in history. Uh, we think that's a $20 trillion idea by 2030. And right now, I believe uh, Bitcoin is valued in the marketplace at roughly 700 billion, something around there. So that's a very big idea. And many people in the developed world don't understand how big it is because they are not growing up or living in an emerging market, which is going through hyperinflation and dis which is destroying purchasing power and wealth. So <clears throat> it's really taking root there. With the exception of the regional banking crisis and something very unusual happened during the regional banking crisis to Bitcoin and to other crypto assets. Um, typically, Bitcoin and crypto generally are risk on assets. You know, they, they tend to do very well in an overall bullish environment. Uh, what happened during the regional bank crisis, we had the regional bank index here in the United States imploding. We had banks going bankrupt and Bitcoin went up from 19,000 uh, up nearly 50%. And uh, we thought, wow, this is proof positive that Bitcoin is also a risk off asset. What does that mean? It means there's no counterparty risk, unlike in the banking system. We've got a very decentralized, transparent network. No, you, can, you can see all the activity taking place by IP address, no counterparty risk. Uh, so a very big idea. Now, artificial intelligence has, has taken uh, a lot of the oxygen out of the room in terms of discussions out there. AI is the biggest catalyst to all of the innovation taking place out there right now. So we have centered our research and in investing around five major innovation platforms. Uh, they are robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, and multiomic sequencing in the life science space. Um, if uh, we, we have a scoring system that measures which technologies are the biggest catalysts to the accelerated rate of growth of other innovations. In other words, there are convergences taking place between and among technologies. AI is the biggest catalyst. It scores, you know, top of the heap. And we think that every company will have to harness it or lose out competitively, either cost structure wise or new products and services wise. 
The other side of this is trying to figure out who are going to be the biggest beneficiaries of this absolute boom in innovation. And um, we think the biggest opportunity out there in the next five to 10 years is, is uh, 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 autonomous, uh, autonomous taxi platforms. Many people call them uh, robo taxis. And we think that could scale from essentially nothing today to uh, an eight to $10 trillion revenue globally, including China, in the next five to 10 years. And I know a lot of people say, no way, you see cruise automation or cruise here in the United States owned by GM had to basically shut down its autonomous and GM's pulling away. This often happens with new in innovations and you see players who should stay in the market pulling out, just saying, this is never gonna happen. And then all of a sudden, you know, it happens and they're not there. We think Tesla is the biggest, a is, is um, uh, performing the biggest AI project in the world. Uh, and we think it's in the pole position here in the United States to get uh, what will be a winner take most uh, opportunity in the robo taxi space. And the interesting thing about that is that will redefine how people think about Tesla. Right now they think about it as an electric vehicle manufacturer. Uh, that's a low margin business. It's in the gross margin category. It's uh, some players are as low as 10 or single digits in, in China. Uh, and Tesla's, we think Tesla will get on the EV side to a 30% gross margin. If autonomous is the next big play here, then that's a SaaS model, software as a service model. And the gross margins there are in the 80% plus. It will redefine what Tesla is doing completely. And so Tesla is doing what Apple did in redefining the, the wireless space. Um, it de developed its own chip, the only cell phone manufacturer to develop, design its own chip. And today it's number one in the smartphone market, computer in your pocket. The others did not define the market that way. Tesla's doing the same thing, only company to design its own chip. And it is redefining uh, the mobility market into autonomous mobility technology is collapsing. If you look at artificial intelligence uh, or yeah, AI training costs, they're dropping 70% per year. And just to put some co color be into that, uh, if ChatGPT had been, if that model had been developed in 2015, five years before it actually was, it would have cost about $500 million to develop it. In 2020, when it was developed, it cost only four and a half million dollars. Today, it would cost 200,000 or less and the costs continue to fall. So the, the, the other thing that's happening with AI in particular is uh, we're talking about large language models and natural language processing. All of us can do that. All of us speak natural languages. So we all could become prompt engineers. Uh, if we just prep a bit and use platforms like Replit to help us program, uh, Replit does 80% of the work with artificial intelligence itself. So I think access is going to increase and this network of VCs funding, you know, the companies in the Valley, that uh, that is going to be an old model. There are innovation centers springing up around the world. Uh, we moved to St. Petersburg, Florida in uh, two years ago because we saw that it was a fertile place for innovation. And we wanted to make a difference and attract tech companies there. And that is happening. It's happening all over the US. It's happening around the world. When I visit uh, the world, there's such an appetite to learn about innovation. And, uh, and policymakers understand if they don't do something about this, they're going to be uh, losing out competitively and leaving you know, high value add positions to other countries. So we're seeing, interestingly, regulatory arbitrage taking place. To give an example, blockchain technology. The US from a regulatory point of view has been terrible. The EU has been much better 
in terms of clear regulations, uh, as opposed to the U.S., all muddled and confused. So a lot of talent has moved to, into Europe, and and actually some of the products they're building, they won't even let U.S. Uh, users use because we we are we live in this regulatory regime. So I think there's going to be regulatory competition and kudos to to Europe for being much clearer in that way. Europe is though very complicated. This is why we entered the market with a partner. The different languages, the nuances and regulations in the different countries. There may be, you know, EU regulation, but then there's country by country. And then, of course, very importantly, uh, uh, relationships. So uh, there's a lot to overcome. But again, the, the barriers to entry are dropping.